Welcome, Dr. Caldwell. And Dr. Powell. It is an honor. Thank you, Commander. Why have you come here? That's quite simple. To end the bloodshed. I am not stupid, Doctor. I know you have come to make peace between us and Gustavo Miraflores. But surely you must know that so long as air fills our lungs and blood courses through our veins, that there can never be peace with La Bestia, Gustavo Miraflores. Even you, the famous Dr. Henry Caldwell, the greatest peacemaker in the world, cannot change that. I believe I can. This is serious, Dr. Powell. Does your colleague truly believe what he says? If he does, then he has either been given abilities by God above, or he is out of his mind. I, I... Commander, I have no divine powers. Peace does not come from the mediator, no matter how eloquent or wise he is. Peace comes from those in conflict. But what if those in conflict do not desire peace? What is to stop me from cutting off your head and sending it to Gustavo Miraflores to show him what I think of your peace? Because that is not your way, Commander. You desire peace. All those in conflict desire peace, whether they realize it or not. Human nature is not to fight. Human nature is to be in harmony. Eons of evolution have programmed that into our minds, our psyches, the DNA of our very cells. We want to survive. And our chances of survival are infinitely greater when we work together in harmony rather than when we work against each other. So what do you say, Commander? Let's give peace a chance. Over the course of my career, I have met with fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, sisters and brothers who refused to call each other family. I have stepped into factories and met with workers and management and restarted the fires of industries that had all but burnt out. I have sat between warring nations and negotiated the turning of swords into plowshares. For the last five and a half years, I have gone over all of these conflicts, from the interpersonal to the international. And in reviewing my notes, I have gleaned the universalities, those elements inherent in all disagreement. In my new book, I have outlined a 100-day method drawing upon a variety of techniques that have proven invaluable to me throughout the course of my career. Using the Caldwell Method, any dispute can be resolved in 100 days. Bravo, Henry. I was asking myself if you'd actually have the uh, courage to stand up there and tell us you could resolve any conflicts. There you are. Remarkable fortitude. Ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleague, well, colleague, <laughs> Dr. John Michael Robertson. Some of you may have heard of the Robertson Technique and its employment in many ineffective mediations. I myself have been called in personally to clean up some of the severe cases, but it's always an honor to clean up after you, John Michael. You know, something I've always envied about Henry is that he's always able to find the most perfect PR people. They won't take a no or a cease and desist for an answer. A team like that could make even the most marginally talented person look like a, well, like a Dr. Henry Caldwell. <laughs> My dear, dear John Michael, it's not as wonderful as it may seem. I mean, there are times when I envy you, and I wish that my book sold, well, like yours, only a few hundred copies, and that I wasn't in such demand on the lecture circuit. Traveling can be so taxing. The University of Hawaii, the Conflict Institute of Borneo, the Fijian Resolution Concern. I mean, honestly, anonymity must be a blessing. <laughs> Better to live honestly and anonymously than dishonestly and, wow. Dr. Robertson, I am frankly appalled that a scholar of your stature would come to these proceedings and cause this kind of disruption. I'll ask you kindly to leave. Dr. Powell, I apologize if my appearance here tonight has caused you distress. In actuality, I came with an opportunity for Dr. Caldwell, an opportunity to show that his 100-day method is everything he claims. Would this opportunity have anything to do with the non-familial domestic conflict study? Yes, indeed. The roommate study. The roommate study. More specifically, Household Foxtrot 1. The six non-smokers. 
correct, Dr. Caldwell. The six non-smokers. They took everything from me. Thousands of dollars in grant money, two book deals, five grad assistants. Those students only wanted to be mediators, Henry, that's all, to help people. That's what I told their parents when I tried to explain why their child had decided to go into investment banking. In the end, I could think of only one possible resolution. Burn the whole damn house to the ground. We'll haul them inside until they were one peaceful cinder. I couldn't crack it, Henry. And I'm big enough to stand up here in front of all my esteemed colleagues and admit it. So I put it to you now. In a hundred days, will you succeed where I failed? Where there is discord, will you sow harmony? Will you put your reputation as world's greatest mediator on the line and take up the conundrum of the six non-smokers? Yes. It's a beautiful house in Georgetown. The owner, Lori Funnel, inherited it and rented out to five others. The rent they're paying is just amazing for that area. The tenants are three male, three female, range of ages. John Michael thinks stop, that Stop, stop, stop. I don't care what John Michael thinks. Henry, I know how you feel about him, but John Michael's not an idiot, and, and there's months worth of research here. No, no, I want to go in fresh. I don't want any of John Michael's bullshit contaminating my process. Six arguing roommates? <laughs> I mean, this is going to be like a luxury cruise. Now get rid of those things. Hi, Lori? Yes. I'm Dr. Regina Powell, you can call me Regina, and this is Dr. Henry Caldwell. You can call me Dr. Caldwell. Lori Funnell, Associate Assistant Director, Omissions and Errors, Internal Revenue Service, GS10. I'd like to ask you both to please wipe your feet on the mat before entering. Oh, sure. Actually, I would like to ask you to please wipe them one more time. Okay. Yes, use broad, sweeping strokes, making sure your feet remain in contact with the mat at all times. Wonderful. <laughs> now, um, may I, um... <sighs> so glad you're both here. I think we were making some real headway with Dr. Robertson, and we're all just looking forward to giving it another shot. Oh, well, we are very happy to be here. <laughs> Shall we? Of course. Just as soon as we go over the house visitors agreement. I told everyone to be here by two. I'll send them a reminder. <laughs> this is pretty typical, actually. I'll tell them something, and it'll be totally disregarded. Complete lack of respect. You feel entitled to respect? Well, it is my house. You see yourself as the head of the household? Yes. So you make the rules? I do. Do the other members of the household find the rules to be within reason? No one's officially complained. And there is a very straightforward grievance form they can fill out if anything does bother them. And I've made it available online, too. Did you author the visitor's agreement? Yes. Guests will be allowed only one cup or glass at a time, so as long as the cup or glass is considered active. A cup or glass will be considered inactive when it has completed its use cycle, has been properly washed, and returned to its designated area in the cupboard. Do you think an average person might find this policy unreasonable? It's a perfectly legitimate request to cut down on unnecessary dishwashing and to prevent accidental viral transmission. How often would you say that the other members of the household fail to adhere to these rules? Most of the time. 60%? 74. And uh, what is the typical response for a violation of house policy? I issue a citation and then follow that up with a meeting. If that fails to resolve the issue, I take away privileges such as bathroom usage or refrigerator space. Bathroom use is a privilege? Absolutely. That's Stefan. Always 
Dr. Caldwell, Regina, this is Stefan Stiles. Dr. Caldwell, Regina. <laughs> That's inappropriate. Flattery, but uh, just inappropriate. I'm sorry. Why are you late? I came as soon as I got your text. But you knew about this. I did? It's on the master calendar, and I issued a memo to everyone in the house. Wow, there's a master calendar? Sorry, I just get a message. I, I, did I miss the meeting? Nah, you're okay, brother. Oh, thanks, God. I, on behalf of the people of Santa Marini, I offer my heartfelt apologizes. Heartfelt. Sorry, heartfelt apologizes. Almost. Regina, Dr. Caldwell, Ilberto Zima, ambassador for Sancto Marini. Ambassador? Yes, and also a minister, and also a counselor, and also first secretary, and also second and third. Yeah, and yeah, he's the entire staff. It's a small country. Yes, very small. Sorry I didn't get the message. Uh, Sancto Marini Cellulario is a little slow. You send a message here, first you go to call station in Sancto Marini, and uh, my brother, he called, tell me message. I, he is president of Sancto Marini Saludario. Actually, his brother is Sancto Marini Saludario. It's a small company. Yes, very small. Good to meet you. Oh. I... Ah, it's the way they do it over there. It's not gay, it's just European. Oh, I, Ambassador, I don't want to disrespect your, your customs or anything, but I don't think that. Okay. First, uh, one time uh, a greeting for women is very passionate, but uh, the men of Santa Marini very jealous, so jealous that we were down to only 18 adult males because of so many fighting to the death. So, handshake is official greeting for women. Did you guys start the meeting? I was totally unaware of this happening today. Lucky I had some cancellations. Apparently, it's on the master calendar. There's a calendar? It was a surprise to me as well. I issued a memo. I only read the ones marked urgent, third notice. You know, I have these practices in place for a reason. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Evelyn Clymer. Sorry for being late. Blessings be upon you, Sarah and mistress. Good morrow to thee. May the trappings of these modest walls bring thee peace and soundness of mind. Vivian's here, so we're just waiting on Coleman. Okay, um, well, since we're just waiting on one person, um, how about we get started with our first initial session? Dr. Kawa? Thank you, Dr. Powell. How many of you here are human beings? Congratulations. You are a marvel of evolution. The ability to walk upright opposable thumbs, cognitive reasoning, adaptations that have not only allowed us to survive, but to thrive, to prosper, to flourish. No other species on the face of the earth has developed more tools to ensure its survival. One of these tools is the ability to listen, not just to hear, but to comprehend. Listening is the foundation of understanding. Understanding is the keystone to harmony. So what we're going to be doing here for the next 100 days is learning how to listen, learning how to understand, learning how to harmonize. I mean, I'll do that. Berto, give me a note. <laughs> uh, different note. Hey. Okay, hold it, hold it. Harmony. Good job, Berto. Yes, it is. Excellent. And we're going to build on that musical harmony to create harmony between people. Whoa, whoa, Doc. That was harmony between people. Uh, unless you're saying that Berto is not a person, and then that's some very racist crap. Now, no, no, that's... Stefan. Music is just one type of harmony. What we're going to be learning to do here over the next hundred days is how to create beautiful music in life. Just as President Amira Flores and the Shining Star Gorillas did. Horseshit.
boy toy to Cougar. The rabbit is out of the hat. Repeat, the rabbit is out of the hat. Coleman, how long have you been hiding there? Not hiding, I've been lying in wait. I've been lying in wait since 0400 hours. I've been gathering information for the past uh, 12.4 minutes, debating on whether or not I needed to call in a rent cycle. What's a rent cycle? Hammer and fist blow to the nape of the neck, death instantaneous. Claw grip to the throat, crush the trachea, death in three to six seconds. Nape, trachea, trachea. Now I'll save the snake oil salesman for last. Yeah, I want to take my time with that. Yeah, you know, I think a quick death would be too good for you, Charlotte, of your caliber. It needs to be long and excruciating, like your uh, Nobel acceptance speech. It's going to involve a, a wetsuit and a Malapterurus electricus. Uh, it's commonly known as an electric catfish, inserted through the posterior. Yeah. You're cute. Yeah. I think uh, I'll just keep my options open, see where that goes. But just in case, uh, hammer fist nape. Instantaneous. Excellent. Would you care to take a seat? I'll stand, actually. Very good, then. Well, since we're all here, what I'd like to do is administer an evaluation. The Subaru Caldwell test was developed by the late Dr. Maximilian Subaru and myself. It has proven to be the most effective predictor of conflict between individuals by assessing a carefully derived number of interpersonal and interpersonal factors. If you were to choose a random group of people anywhere in the Earth, this test would predict the probability of disagreement, the frequency of disagreement, and the intensity of disagreement. It is the gold standard of assessment in the field of mediation. So we'll take the evaluation today, just as a baseline, and then we'll take the evaluation again in 100 days just to confirm a clean bill of health. Henry, this is not good. They scored off the charts on the Subaru Caldwell, and there are three full standard deviations above the Bloods and the Crips. The only thing these people have in common is that they all don't smoke. I'm not sure traditional methods are going to be successful. Well, I suppose it's good that we're not using traditional methods. We're using the Caldwell method. In, in one word, word, how would you, would you describe, describe yourself? yourself? How many words does one mean in this scenario? Steph Styles. One word, baby. Motruco. I don't know how you say in English. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. I can't articulate it verbally. I could do it physically, but you'd have to take your shirt off. One word. I don't get any of it. I'm going to say the name of another member of the household. I want you to express your feelings about that person freely and honestly. Lori. Geheime Stadtspolizei. Stick up the ass. I mean, like, all the way up. I mean, all the way up. Beautiful, beautiful flower. In any painful thorns that dig into the flesh and reap it from the bones. Do you enjoy the rigid protocols and structure of your job? Yes. I know there are a lot of people out there who think the IRS is just a bunch of pencil pushing busybodies, but I have a much different perspective. Order is humanity's answer to the chaos of nature. Systems and rules are the foundations of civilization. Without them, we're just animals foraging around for food. The IRS represents the pinnacle of human evolution. And you arrived at this conclusion based on years of study and careful reflection? Yes. Not out of some obsessive compulsion to drive you to this type of work? No. Stefan, an archer of tunes whose quiver hath but one shaft. He actually puts singer-songwriter down on his tax return every year. Girl, you're my baby, my woman, my girl. That's it. One song. You could call him a one-hit wonder, but he's one hit short of that. That's, um, really nice packaging. Huh. 
Thanks, yeah, I did the artwork and photography myself. You know, Randy Jackson heard my track. He says, it's not bad, dog. Really? The American Idol guy? Yeah, Randy J. Randy J, that's what I call him. Did you do Idol? Oh, no, 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 no. That's for the young artists, not for established artists like myself. No, I met Randy J back when he was uh, touring with uh, Journey. Yeah, we're sitting in the back of a limo at 3 a.m. looking for an IHOP. The man was into some pancakes back in the day. Journey, that was 20 years ago? Seems like yesterday, though. So this song is 20 years old? Oh, the original version. This is the new version featuring Beyonce. Oh, Beyonce. No, Beyonce, with a D, as in, that's not bad, dog. <laughs> yeah. Would you like a copy? Alberto. I don't think a bedroom should double as an embassy. That's just me. Vulnerable. Hmm. Particularly around the jugular. I don't really have an opinion on Alberto. I mean, he's so utterly worthless, what's the point of even having an opinion? Cinco Marini is a very small country. Uh, we have only 6,462 population. Uh, my sister has twins last year. Very handsome boys, large private parts. How many Sancto Marinians are living in the United States? Sixth. The Colasco family of Tucson, Arizona, and Marsucotuca, and Diego Molco in Massachusetts. Between you and me, I think they come here for a big gay wedding. Is that illegal in Sancta Marini? Yes, but not because we have problem with gay boys, because Sancta Marini already has few men left. We need all sperm we can spare. I send home a sample every month. Unfortunately, they have to keep sperm in freezer. We do not have yet doctor who can make baby out of sperm and egg in, in, in dish. Vivian. Her resident reports are always written in verse. The die thou. Speak English already. She puts on her bra and panties before she dries her hair. What the hell is that? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Hamlet, that's wonderful. Vivian, you clearly have an affinity for the bard. That's one that I share as well. I took three semesters of Shakespeare as an undergrad. But I wonder if I may talk to you in your own words. Poseth thy queries, and hath thine answers shall be. OK, that's not happening. Um, on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how would you rate your relationship with your housemate? Sheath. Uh, there, rust and let me die. Uh, uh. Coleman. Do her evil deeds. A villain spawned from Lucifer's own infernal loins. I swear that dude's watching me. According to the Subaru Caldwell, you're a CIA agent. Semi-retired. I've been called up to keep an eye on the uh, Sancta Marinian ambassador, who, besides being his country's entire diplomatic contingent, is also his country's entire spy network. Coleman, don't take this the wrong way, but I find it very unlikely that you could be a CIA agent, semi-retired or otherwise. Could be or would be. Tell me the difference. Well could be as a matter of capability, would be as a matter of personality. So either you're insulting my intelligence or my character, and I'd like to know which. Evelyn, a purveyor of pleasure, posing as pain. It's real difficult to get into my flow, and she's entertaining. I don't think bedroom should be used like that. That is just me. I understand that you're a literary agent, and your housemates have a problem with this? I was a literary agent. I repped a few best-selling authors. A bunch of talentless hacks, but they wrote crap they could sell. Eventually, I got tired of dealing with the egos and the asinine material they were pumping out. And what is it that you do now? 
Domination. Domination? Yeah. I'm not pulling your chain. <laughs> A little dominatrix humor there. <laughs> uh, and how is it that you, you got into this um, field? Well, I took some time and looked into different lines of work. I like being my own boss. I like making my own schedule. I was looking for something with less BS and fewer headaches. Domination offered all of those things. Plus, I never have to do housework. <laughs> and the sex doesn't bother you? Sex? No sex. It's a common misconception that domination inevitably involves sex. And it certainly can, but the key element is submission. Some people just like to be shat on, figuratively speaking. I don't do any of that stuff either. I had to put my foot down about that once. I had this one client and she used to ask me to stand over I'm and- I'm sorry, she? Oh, sure. I've got a number of woman clients. Really? Coleman, is that your first name or your last name? Yes. Okay. Coleman, um, I'm afraid that we may have gotten off on the wrong foot here. Am I correct in saying that I detect a, a little hostility? Was it my threat to break your neck with my bare hands slowly and painfully that makes you say that? Well, partly. That and some of your body language, like the arm crossing. Coleman, I want you to know that I'm not on anyone's side here. My position is purely neutral. I don't make judgments about people's behavior, past or present. So if I were to grab you, pummel you, throw you to the ground, and use your mouth as a urinal, you wouldn't judge me for that? No. Not even if you enjoyed it? No. Hmm. That's admirable. So, do you think we can get a fresh beginning on this? Boy toy to cougar. Moving in to check the diaper. Coleman, I'm not judging. But this behavior is not conducive to the process. Yeah, you can act like you're Jesus Christ if you want to, but I know the score. You won that Nobel Peace Prize for sorting out a bunch of rebels who had no shot at winning and a president who had no clue how to shut them down. Yeah, there was no fight to fix because we'd been keeping it under control for 20 years. And then you stick your overeducated nose in and get in on a bunch of magazine covers. Yeah, it all read Peacemaker when it should have read Peacefaker. Yeah, and I know when you met Commandant Dominguez, your pants were full of shit. Boy, toy to cougar, the diaper is clean. Oh, 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 oh. oh, so oh Dr. Caldwell. Henry, I, I, I was... Oh, she was just observing a little demo of what I do. Oh, yeah, a demonstration. Thank you, Evelyn. This has been very important. Um, I need to speak to her. Could you, if you don't mind? Oh, sure. Thanks for waiting. I think he drugged me. Who? That lunatic, Coleman. Look at my pupils. Do they look dilated? Oh, but I can tell. Are you sure he drugged you? I'm like 60, 65 percent certain. There's 10 minutes I can't account for. And just before it happened, he threatened to urinate in my mouth. Now, I can't be certain, but I think I taste it. Oh, my goodness. Horrid. Yeah. How do you think you did it? Something you drink? I have no idea. What do you do? Well, let's, could you take me to the hospital? Let's yeah. call it a day. Okay, sure. Okay. It's happened, right? Everything else good? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Stage one, identification. What's your assessment of week one? Uh, what's your assessment? Let's come back to that. Stage two, declaration. In the Subaru Caldwell, everyone had the opportunity to anonymously air their grievances with the other tenants. In non-familial domestic situations, the average number of unique complaints against another member of the household is 11. With this case, the average number of complaints is 146. And they range in severity from the trivial to what in 50 states would be a felony. Should we pull John Michael's file on it? They might be useful. No, no, are you still hanging on to those things? I don't want to know anything that John Michael had to say about this case. I don't care if he found out that Coleman is from Mars. 
and he's here to enslave half humanity and use the other half to power his hybrid space saucer. If I learned something about Coleman, it's because I derived it, not John Michael. Okay, I just thought they'd be helpful. So what's next? I've decided that we'll split up. We'll each take a group of three and work on rebuilding trust. And Coleman? Is in your group. You've all taken a look at yourselves and had the chance to tell us what you thought of each other. Now we're going to explore these two ideas, and as we do, you're going to listen to one another, respect one another as we come together. Why have I been paired with these two? There's no specific reason. The groupings were random. <laughs> There's no such thing as random. If I've been paired with them, there's obviously a reason. Coleman, don't overreact. If she says there's no reason, there's no reason. You're not on the clock right now, whips and chains. Daddy is just trying to make a point here, okay? Oh, oh wait a minute. It, it was those pictures of Vivi in the shower, wasn't it? We said those question thingies were anonymous. Oh. I mean... <clears throat> Thou saidest... She wants to be an actress. I got her tons of free publicity. Uh, they were eating those pics up on the net. The way I see it, if I set a place at the table for you and you don't want to eat, well, then that's just a lack of gratitude. Look, I assure you the groupings had nothing to do with how you answered the assessments. You have been grouped based on how you answered the assessments. Now, the three of you showed a very high degree of interpersonal difficulty, and I wanted to address that in this breakout session. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Now speak freely. I don't think we have problem. Nope. Yeah, we cool, man. Now, that's understandable. I know that this is uncomfortable for you. But I want you to speak freely. And remember that this, this is a respect zone and a judgment-free zone. So speak up, speak your mind. No one here will think any differently of you. If there is problems, it's me. I'm I, I, sorry. I. I'm just a piece of trash under fat, ugly Manchu. I, I am like what happens when you flush the toilet. The something comes back. Very annoying. Come on, don't beat yourself up, brother. I deserve to be beaten. I am like stepchild who, is, who has red hair and is also prostitute. Can you believe I, this is what Sanctum Marini has representing it? Out of an entire country, this is the best they could do. Doesn't it make you just itch to go visit? Well, don't do that. Don't do what? I mean, he already beats himself up enough, OK? He doesn't need that. So you guys like best friends now? No, but he also doesn't deserve to be treated like that either. Isn't there some empty bar you should be singing in? So it's like that now, huh? If that's the way you like it. Mm. Stefan, what are you doing? <gasps> oh! oh my god, that's horrible. Stop fighting. Please. Okay, let's try some exercises. Vivian, are you all right? She may be faking it. Any opportunity for a death scene. Well, how do you know she's faking it? Vivian? No, I have this little trick I can tell when she's acting or not. What is it? Ow! She's acting. Well, that was a shining success. Coleman, you missed the entire point of the exercise. This is a trust ball. How is Vivian supposed to trust you now? I get the point of the exercise. Look, she has absolutely no reason to trust me, so I have absolutely no reason to catch her. The, the way I see it, she, she's going to get screwed by a lot of men in her lifetime, right? So my not catching her is probably one of the best lessons she'll ever get. I hate to admit it, but he makes a good point. Oh. Yes, move. Yes, walk. Yes. Oh, God. Sorry. Uh, turn it square. No, I mean right. No, no, I mean, I, I mean left. Oh, my God. Uh, which way is left in your language? It's square. Fine, it's square. And what's right? I, dirico. OK, so which way is right now? No, not right now. Um, turn left. OK, so I'm turning left. OK, now go forward two meters. No, sorry. Oh, you said I'm going to uh, two meters shorter than the rest of the world. 
sorry. The six of you are aboard a chartered plane that has just crash landed on a desert island. You all have an inventory of the items that were aboard the plane. You will be allowed to take only three items with you to ensure your survival. I will ask you to each make a list of those three items and explain why you chose them. That will give us a list of 18 items, and then later, as a team, we'll whittle that number down to 12. We, we crash landed? Yes. Then most of us, if not everyone but myself, are dead. It's hypothetical. It's not relevant to the uh, discussion. <laughs> sure, it's relevant. I if you got two survivors, then your needs are different than if there's six. We're assuming that all six of you survived. Highly unlikely. I mean, the, the, the pilot is still alive, too? There is no pilot. Who flew the plane? You're shipwrecked. Oh, then why do we only get 12 items? Hellman, for the love of God, will you shut it off for 10 minutes? All right. But let me just ask this. How many of you here have ever survived a shipwreck? That's what I thought. The pencil and paper are for writing, creation of schedules, delegation of duties, etc. And then I chose the ruler so I could make straight, evenly spaced lines. Very good. Uh, everyone take note. I think that's a good answer. See? Vivian? Oh. Um, I chose Hamlet, which is self-explanatory. Then I went with Romeo and Juliet and Richard III. I was a little disappointed that King Lear wasn't on the list because I would have chosen that over Richard III. Um, yeah, we should have uh, revised this list. <laughs> I know. It's a pretty embarrassing omission. <laughs> Uh, knife, hatchet, rope. Mm -hmm. Well, those are um, certainly practical choices. How might you use those items? Oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's less about how I would use them than um, how might they might. See, once the hunger starts to get to everyone, they're going to be looking to eat each other, and uh, I don't want them armed. But, but incidentally, when we get to that point, then uh, well, I go for Vivi. She's young and lean, and uh, she probably had all her shots. But uh, the, uh, the, the knife, hatchet, rope, I, I could probably use that to uh, make a one-person craft and just you know, slip out when none of them notice. So. That, 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 that's how I did it the last time. Yes, uh, <clears throat> what do we have scheduled for tomorrow? Uh, we have the plane, I mean, shipwreck exercise. No, oh, no, that's okay. I think we got everything we need from that. Mm -hmm. Henry, what if we went off book a little bit? I mean, I'm not doubting the method or anything, but this is a unique circumstance. It might behoove us to be flexible. No, no, th this is how it works sometimes. Um, it doesn't seem like anything is happening, and then a breakthrough comes out of nowhere. Um, I don't want to suddenly change gears. Okay. Dr. Robertson, you can't go in there. Dr. Powell, Dr. Caldwell, good evening. I'm sorry, Dr. Caldwell. I told him you weren't seeing anyone today. Oh, that's okay, Olga. Dr. Robertson is very adept at finding some way to insert himself. Olga, is there any coffee left? Yes. Ah, dump it out, please. Yes, Dr. Caldwell. Would you like to take a seat? Thank you, Henry. Grad students. Couldn't take a piss without me telling them when to go. 
Well, Pilsner University has uh, relaxed its admission requirements. <laughs> Speaking of relaxed, how are things at the House? What's today? Day 43? I imagine you've made some great progress. Phenomenal progress. In fact, we're ahead of schedule. We've been doing a number of chess exercises, and they've responded fabulously. Really? Because I took the liberty of arranging a press conference for day 100. Oh, nothing extravagant, just a few people from some prominent academic journals, uh, three or four people from national magazines, a few foreign newspapers. But if you're ahead of schedule, maybe you could uh, administer the Subaru Caldwell now, and I could bump up the date. No, 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 no. Day 100 is good. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't want to mess with that. Uh, it is the 100-day method, after all, and uh, that's what people are expecting. Uh, a press conference, huh? Yeah. Why wait, right? <laughs> why indeed. <laughs> why, why, why? Nothing we didn't already know. Wait a minute. One, two, three, five? Who would even have access to... Coleman, I'm breaking all kinds of protocol in meeting with you like this, but I wanted to speak to you individually because I... I because you want to sleep here. Yeah. Okay, now that, that was a look of confusion, not disgust. It's, it's pretty much a wide open door, really. No, no door. I, I'm not here to sleep with you. But you could have come in here for that. I could have come in here for anything. Oh, kinky girl. Look, I did not come in here to sleep with you. That's just, that's not gonna happen. So, end of story. Good. Because this could have been awkward. I saw John Michael's file on you, or rather what you did to John Michael's file on you. And I also noticed a bunch of files that were unaccounted for. Is there another word for file? Because like you just used it like a million times. What did you do with the other files? Nothing. Look, I, you know, I cleaned mine out as a matter of course. The rest of it, I, I left it as I found it. After I read through it. You read John Michael's files? Sure. Well, except the missing one. So how well do you know your roommates? I know these people better than they know themselves. Really? Where did Evelyn go to college? Bailey College, Oxford. She studied classics. What was the name of Stefan's ex-wife? Cynthia Browning. They met as backup singers for Rick James. How old was Vivian when she memorized her first play? Five. And it was As You Like It, not Twelfth Night, like the file said. How about we exchange notes? I'll tell you what I know, and um, you can fill in the blanks. Hi. Let's start with Stefan. He's been a singer-songwriter for 20 years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was, girl, you're my baby, my woman, my girl. <laughs> you people are very, very sexy tonight. A lot of sexy people in here. Hey, did y'all like that? Check it out. CD's off for sale, brother, so go and get that. Hey, I liked it, so I want to hear it again, huh? Yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> girl, you're my baby, my woman, my girl, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. He's only got the one song, but he does all right for himself. Trouble is, they think he's doing a comedy routine. They think he's playing a loser musician who only has one song. I mean, he gets a lot of work from it, but he doesn't realize they're laughing at him. It's just awful. I mean, not awful like starving child in a third world country awful, but awful relative to, say, Bill Gates stubbing his toe awful? Sure. Moving on, El Dr. Zima. This is the El 
The country of Sancto Marini was founded by a group of Roman soldiers who fled their legions somewhere between now with modern Spain and France. They met a couple of the local girls and the country was started. Thing is, Sancto Marini was founded by cowards. I don't know if I'd say it like that, but they do have a reputation for surrendering. Well, they laid down during every major European conflict. They were conquered 44 different times. 30 times they were liberated. The other 14, the conquerors weren't interested in even hanging on to the country. Until 1956, the national flag of Sancto Marini was a white field on a white field. <laughs> and then they realized how embarrassing that was. They decided to put the national animal on it, a mouse. So that's why Ambassador Zima is totally spineless. It's his national heritage. Which is something I just can't figure out. If he's so harmless, why are you supposed to be keeping tabs on him? Intelligentica Centrale consists of six individuals. That makes it per capita the largest intelligence agency in the world. I mean, you think the United States of America is really going to sleep on a security threat like that? I mean, several days ago, Zima was actually searching nuclear reactors on Wikipedia. I don't think I have to connect the dots for you. Uh huh. Next, Lori Funnel. Lori's a bit on the OCD side of the spectrum, a bit controlling, nothing too serious. But there's some tension between Alberto, Stefan, and Lori. Oh, it's because Lori slept with Stefan and uh, broke Zima's heart. Wow, that wasn't in the file. No, no, it was my own independent research. Anyway, uh, Lori and Zima have this thing for each other. Whenever you'd see them together, they'd have these stupid grins on their faces. It really made you want to vomit. So Lori would leave her same bullshit notes under Zima's door. Oh, he was totally into it. He loved the attention. It's so sweet. Whatever. Look, the problem is that Lori is too uptight and Zima was too chicken shit, so nobody would ever make the first move. Fast forward, December. Lori goes to the IRS Christmas party. She gets completely lit up. Completely. She's dropped off at home that night. She's uh, feeling a little amorous. And she finally has the courage to approach Zima. Even blind drunk, Lori still adheres to protocol and submits a formal request for sex to Zima. And unfortunately, she's so drunk, she can't slide the note under the door. Stefan finds it, and he's not about to pass up some IRS. Lori, too drunk to know the difference. So Zima gets to hear the sounds of their sweet lovemaking over the sound of his own sobbing. Zima felt betrayed. All that warm, fuzzy stuff went away. Lori knew that he knew, but uh, she hated that he didn't have the stones to say something about it. Poor Alberto. No, it's just a... Uh, the latest in a long line of invertebrate sanctimonians. But he's a Latin man, and somewhere inside there's just a passion waiting to be released. He just needs a little push. Let's talk about Evelyn. You want to know what she's like in the sack? No, um, <laughs> no, let's, um, let's talk about her business. Um, I understand that Evelyn is quite good at what she does. She may be the best, actually. Congressmen, senators, movie stars, athletes, foreign dignitaries, you name it, Lady E has it. And everybody comes back for seconds. <clears throat> Impressive. But she misses the books, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. She'd give up the S&M in a minute if she could find the right author. But she's still looking. So I showed her my draft from my time undercover as an Afghani goat trying to bring down Al-Qaeda. 
She wasn't interested. Okay, she may know spanking, but she wouldn't know a good book if it hit her in the ass. So that just leaves one. Okay, well, uh, what do you want to know about me? You want to read my book? Actually, I was talking about Vivian. Oh. Okay. By the time she was 10, Vivian Van Dusen had read all of Shakespeare's major plays and a few of the minor ones. She became a little bit of a celebrity. You know, they called her the Shakespeare whiz kid. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Everybody thought she was destined to be a great Shakespearean actress. But when her big moment came... She choked. She's taking Theater 110 for the eighth semester in a row, and she does her little thing around the house. But she hasn't auditioned for another play since. That's so sad. So, you, uh, want to get a burger or something before we start talking about me? Um, I think I have everything I need to know about you. You haven't seen my dark side yet. How about I take your manuscript and give it a read? Seriously? Absolutely. All right, look. Yeah, I know in the beginning it seems to drag just a little bit, but uh, just, just stay with it. See, I'm trying to create this atmosphere. Now, it does start to pick up around page, like, I don't know, 134? I'll give you notes. How about that? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Now, I need help with a few other things. From here on out, you will listen to Regina and take her advice on how to proceed. Is that clear? Yes. Is that clear? Yes! Day 52. To be brutally honest, we're slightly behind schedule. By approximately... Oh, 10 to 50 days. However, I don't want to make light of the lateral progress that we've made, which is significant. I feel as if we're on the cusp of something major, and when that happens, we're going to get caught up in a hurry. So to that end, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Powell, who has a fresh perspective and a unique exercise that I think we'll all enjoy. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, good, good. Dr. Powell. Thank you, Dr. Caldwell. <clears throat> As we have said before, harmony is based on understanding. Never judge a man until you've walked a mile in his shoes. That's understanding. We have evolved to go beyond our own feelings and to empathize with others, to see another person's perspective. And that's what this exercise is all about. But before you try getting into each other's minds, you're going to get into some minds that haven't become overly complicated. You're going to walk a mile in some small shoes. You're going- Are we gonna be working with children? That's what I was getting to. Yeah. <sighs> Children cannot adhere to an agenda. My mother had six. I hated five of them. So I have two too many already. Children, green in judgment, cold in blood. In Vento Marini, men not allowed in the same room as child unless until they were 21 years. I, you know, I, I don't trust them. I, I don't trust anything that can pull a trigger. Oh my God. Hey, listen, dimwits. You're 50 days behind on this program, which is just embarrassing. We've had more results with the Black Panthers and the Aryan Brotherhood than we have with you. Now, each of you is going to be assigned an adorable, precious child, and you're going to stop your bullshit long enough to assist these little angels in accomplishing their respective tasks. Everything you need to know is in these files. Oh, and uh, we only have five children, so you two are sharing. T minus 48 days, folks. Andrea, 
prepare a school spirit speech for assembly. Bobby. Write a fight song for the school basketball team. Marjorie. Write a report on someone you admire. Thaddeus. Come up with a mm -hmm. fundraiser for dance club. Katie, flower buddy, ring saffron. So what are you doing, Sprout? Earning my emergency preparedness back. Oh, emergency preparedness. All right. Your mommy and daddy have been captured by Marxist paramilitaries. Your mommy's being used as a bargaining chip to release four prisoners. And your daddy's probably already been neutralized. So, uh, what do you do? He was Marcus. And that's why I think that River Elementary is the best school in the world. Um, okay. I thought that was a little... And it should be more... You know? No. Okay. Um, I guess what I mean to say is that it was a little... Hubja, hubja, hubja. And it should be more like... Hoo -da, 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 da Got it? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Let's try it again like that. Make him stop. Little boy, stop dancing. I, I, I say, stop dancing. Little boy, stop. Little boy, stop moving. I am all out of idea. There's not even any music. So, you ever write a song before? You sing? So why did they choose you to write a fight song? Okay, hold on. I have a couple of ideas. So, tell me what you think. That's hot, right? No touching, no looking. You look at me or your books, nothing else. Is that clear? Yes. Good, because otherwise I have to put a pair of blinders on you. And don't think I don't have them. Who's the subject of your paper? My mom. What does your mom do? She picks me up from school, she does the laundry, she makes my lunch, she watches the baby. Okay, I don't mean to cut you off here, but your mom doesn't sound like anything special. No disrespect intended. I totally respect the mommy track if that's the way a woman decides to go, but you have to admit it's not totally original. Let's think of some other people. Considering we live in a post-9-11 world, I gotta tell you, this, this is really pretty embarrassing. What was your name again? Katie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need you to wear a name tag from now, because I'm never gonna remember that. You know, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, just masking tape, write it right on it, or, or you could scribble it right across your forehead with a magic marker. Otherwise, it's just gonna be, hey, you. So anyway, back to this. I, you know, if I were a flower girl, I would be writing the managing director because he clearly does not care about your safety and well-being. Or uh, she. Is it a woman? Yeah, I bet it's a woman. Explain a lot. Catalina. Crush is Xanax in it. It's 23 days to the press conference. Don't think about it. Don't let John Michael dictate our process. Don't tighten up. Please, don't even speak that name. I'm sorry. How's the kid exercise going? Good. I'm seeing a lot of positive results. Oh, yeah? Name two. I'm seeing a lot of potential for positive results. Oh, those poor children. Oh, it's gonna be fine, Henry. I can see the journal headlines now. 
Caldwell et al. destroy children's lives. Henry, it's gonna be okay. I can't believe that I agreed to this. We had to step outside the box a little bit. Outside the box? Outside the box? We left a child in the care of that sociopath, Coleman. I'll probably turn her into beef jerky or some heartless robotic killing machine. Ow! What was that for? For thinking those horrible things. I'm in total agreement with her. Drink your tea. The kids will be fine. I'll see to it. Okay? So you like that? You didn't like any of those? You watch American Idol? So you know who Randy Jackson is. Well, Randy Jackson liked it, and you don't. Now, I have nothing else for you, okay? That's all I have. So you're gonna have the quietest fight song ever, because it's gonna have no lyrics and no music. Can I chime in here? You could try writing a different song. Different how? I mean, your song, it's, it's really great and everything. I just think that maybe you and Bobby here could try writing something with different notes and, and, and lyrics and, and such. You want to do that? All right. That's what you want to do, then that's what we'll do. But my boy Randy wouldn't like this. He was all the men Greece, best school in the world. He has the smartest students and the nicest teachers. We have the baseball team, the soccer team, and the basketball team. We also have a band. Andrea, sweetie, let me just stop you there for a minute, okay? Vivian, what did you think of that? I mean, I thought it was bleh, you know? I don't know what that means. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it could have been a little more Okay, um, how about we try this? How would you have done it better? I mean, like, I... Hey, Andrea, would you like Vivian to show you how she does it? Yes. Okay, then why don't you go show her how to do it? So, sweetie, come sit next to me, and then, um... I'll hold on to that, though. I mean, you haven't memorized by now, and surely this is cake compared to Shakespeare, you know? So just, you're gonna rip it. Oh. Here, come sit here. Oh, you don't wanna do that. Trust me, it's gonna get much better, okay? Rivers. Rivers. Elementary. Elementary. Is. Is. The. The. Best. Best. School. School. In, in the, the world. <laughs> That's right, right? <laughs> Mother Teresa, Abraham Lincoln, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, all great choices, excellent choices, excellent conventional predictable choices. I'll bet there'll be at least two reports on each of these people. I mean, I would have thought Madonna would have been pretty out there, but at least it would have been something different. Don't mind the congressman. I've seen him on TV. They like to be on TV a lot. This one's trying to win my vote. This is democracy in action, little lady. Are your parents registered voters? Those cabinets aren't dusting themselves. Yes, Lady Eve. Marjorie, do you like Evelyn? Yeah, she wears shoes like our couch. Would you like to write your paper on Evelyn? That would definitely be original, but even crazier than Madonna. Marjorie? Did you know that Evelyn used to work with authors? You mean like an agent? Yeah. What'd you take, 10 or 15 percent? <laughs> Sweetheart, please, 20. Cool, I wanna write about you. Really? You used to be a literary agent? <laughs> Who said you could talk? <laughs> you don't stop, we had to stop, but you don't stop. I don't understand where the energy comes from. He hasn't wanted anything to eat or drink for hours. So this was the solution you came up with? Well, we tried putting a sedative in some punch, but again, no eating or drinking. 
the Sancto Marini, we would have priests perform exorcism and send a child to France. I take it there's been no movement on the fundraising objective then? Oh no, we have a lot of ideas. We came up with some excellent plans, ran a feasibility study, uh, held a focus group. Um, what did you conclude? We concluded that a telemarketing campaign was the most direct way to reach out to people and to fully articulate our cause. We could outsource to Santa Marina. My, my cousin does telemarketing. So for me, it's insourcing. Mm. Um, I think you may be overthinking the problem just a little bit. Um, you're trying to raise money to get Thaddeus's dance club to a competition. Right. Less is more. Let me just leave you with that thought. And um, this. All right, it's important always to be in a position where you can see the entire room, right? Because you never know who or uh, what might be trying to get in through a door or window. Uh, it's also a good idea to uh, keep an eye on the ceiling and the floor. So plus uh, this, it's an interior wall. So we always want to listen to hear what's going on on the other side. Do you see this balcony? Mm -hmm. Sitting duck completely vulnerable from every conceivable angle. But what, what, what is she looking at? Oh, just one potential that I was present. Exactly. See, she is completely distracted from her surroundings. <laughs> there was this one time when I was uh, in Morocco. Doesn't really matter. Kansas, Morocco, what the point is, always watch your back. Our graduates have become attorneys and artists, bankers and bakers, pilots and poets. They have flown in space shuttles and have sat in the houses of government. They have built bridges between cities and bridges between people. Good, good. Remember that it's principal, P-L-E, when you use it like this, not P-A-L. And I graduated summa cum laude. I think you should include that. Oh, and I made a profit my first year in operation. Is that good? Good. It's phenomenal. P-H-E-N-O-M. Five minutes, four seconds. I think we can knock two minutes off that, how about you? Sir, yes, sir. If you dare say fair, don't walk up a shot, so this job is trying to fuck the pride, run the block. See a lot like you, do the type to cut in. Only know you for a week of vote, claim you my friend. You change your attitude, now you look a real superstar. You say you ain't a band, but you sound like some song. You bad, but the herd is on a miss. Things that get turned like bird bird. Okay, 15 minutes, that's with a bathroom break. Got it? Great, brother. 15 minutes, we'll be back. I don't believe it. They're actually cooperating. 
Well done, Dr. Powell. You laid the groundwork, Dr. Codwell. Well, don't be so modest. Just following your lead, fix the interpersonal and then the interpersonal. Well done. I think we're ready to wrap up here, Dr. Powell. I concur. At the start of this study, you were given the Subaru Caldwell assessment to provide us with an objective measure of your interpersonal conflicts. Now, we administer this evaluation again to gauge the progress that you have made. Ah, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Let's wait for the official word. You're doing so much better today. You had me scared for a little bit. Well, you know, I have to tell you, I was really on the brink there for a while. I mean, for the first time in my career, I had no answers. I am so grateful that Dr. Powell stepped in when she did. Ah, speak of the devil. I was just telling Olga here that, oh my God, it's bad, isn't it? The uh, Subaru Caldwell results have shown no measurable progress. No measurable progress? No, they're the same now as they were on day one. Well, how could that be? They were showing some signs of improvement. There was positive interaction, cooperation, civil discourse. I don't know. I'm as shocked as you are. Oh, my God. This is it. I mean, tomorrow's the press conference. Oh, Lord. Oh. Henry, we've seen success. You've said so yourself. So just get up there and tell them the truth. Well, John Michael won't let me get away with that. The Subaru Caldwell, there's the proof, and we don't have it. I can get up there and say all kinds of warm, fuzzy things, and it won't mean anything. Dr. Caldwell. My dear Olga, where will you go now, since you can't work for this massive fraud? Dr. Caldwell, stop it. I still work for you. Henry, calm down. There's time before tomorrow. We can give it a positive spin. <laughs> oh, John Michael, you son of a bitch. Look what you've done to me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is pathetic. We've got to do something. <laughs> That wouldn't have been my first choice. Well, it worked, didn't it? Yeah. What do we do with him? Um, I guess just let him rest. That way he can just get up tomorrow and speak. Can you take him home tonight, make sure he's all right? Yeah, of course. And that includes not hitting him in the head with any more blows. Right. I'm just gonna go figure out what we're gonna do. Katie, what are you doing here? What are any of us doing here? I mean that in the existential sense. Rhetorically, you don't really have to answer it. You know, in retrospect, I probably should have just said something else. You know about the evaluation results? Of course I do. Did you rig them? Why would I do something like that? I'm not really sure what motivates you to do anything. As honest as anything that this mouth has ever uttered, I did not rig the results. But neither did John Michael Robinson. Then what happened? Human nature. Hey, I can't explain that. But I do know that you and uh, Dirty Diaper are in a bit of a tight spot. So I'm here to offer my assistance. Why would you want to help us? Because you're all right, Dr. Powell. Hey, I am not going to argue with a flower buddy first class. So, how can I help you, Dr. Powell? Um, I guess if you could get all the roommates to the house tomorrow afternoon and make sure everyone stays there, I'll figure out the rest. I'll do one better. Coleman, what do you mean by that? Get some sleep, Dr. Powell. Is everything set for tomorrow? Event crew is all set. All journalists are on board. Oh, good. What about catering? Coffee, tea, and assortment of bagels, and two different kinds of cream cheese. Danish? Uh, no Danish. <sighs> are you kidding me? You know Robertson needs his Danish. Go back to the office and make sure there's Danish there. Right. Oh, Jesus. Coleman. 
And you know, it must be nice having a PhD candidate bringing you Danish. It's been a long time. How are you, Gunnar? Better. I'm on medication now. The dreams have stopped. Oh yeah, I'm really sorry about that. You know, I, I'm not always trying to get inside someone's head. Sometimes it just, it just happens. What do you want? I want you to keep looking at me. Yeah. Is that my lamp? <laughs> You're demented. Is this a kid or a midget? We'll ask the question. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> All right, I'll talk. What do you want to know? You're gonna tell us everything you know. And when we're done here tonight, you're gonna forget you ever saw us. Okay. Where are the files? Dr. Powell, I've got a bit of an emergency. What happened? Dr. Caldwell was doing much better this morning, and he asked to come to the office, so we did. Then he asked me to go get him a latte, so I went to get him one, and when I came back, he was gone, and now I don't know where he is. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's not your fault. Um, just check around the university, check around his house, check all the usual places. Okay. If you find anything out, let me know. I'm going over to Foxtrot. You gotta be kidding me. You guys are all here, thank God. Van Coleman wouldn't let anybody leave. Oh, thanks, Coleman. Yeah, well, what's going on? Who are those people in the foyer? Yes, the ones who are flagrantly disregarding the foyer policies. Okay, um... Full disclosure time. The study that you guys have all graciously participated in has been something of a wager. Before Dr. Cobble and I took this case, you guys were involved in a different study with a colleague of ours. Dr. Robertson. Yes. D-bag. Scoundrel. Right, that guy. Anyways, um, he sort of made a bet that Dr. Col Henry's methods couldn't sort you guys out. Henry essentially then risked his entire reputation saying that he could. But according to the results, you guys don't get along any better now than you did 100 days ago. The people in the front foyer, they're setting up for a press conference that Dr. Robertson has arranged to humiliate Henry. And that's basically the story. So I'm here now to appeal to all of you to save a man's career. Henry is a good person who's lived a good life and he's done many good things. And it's just not right or fair that his life is gonna be ruined like this. So we were some kind of game between a couple of academics? No, our intentions were completely honest. Yeah, well, I don't know, man. It's all messed up to me. No one would ever do something so evil in Santa Marini. Uh, all right, before everyone gets all morally indignant, I wonder if I might interject. Okay, you'll all recall that we were asked by Dr. Robertson to participate in his study. He was attracted to our diversity. He thought that our unique collection of individuals would make for a fascinating example. These are records that Dr. Robertson pulled from the Foxtrot One files. Any conclusions, Dr. Powell? You guys were fine. You guys were completely fine before John Michael came along. That's true. Apart from Lori's fascist regime, we all got along just fine. Hey, you all lived perfectly happy, separate lives until John Michael showed up and mashed you all together. He was the catalyst. And now he's gonna use this to take Henry down. To hell with that. Screw Robertson. I ain't got no love for that hater. I'm still a little upset about the fascist thing, but I agree. I am Spartacus. So what do you need us to do? Okay, well, first thing will be to find Henry. Where'd he go? I don't know. He went missing this morning. But if we all split up, I'm sure we could find him. I'll find Henry. The rest of you can stay here and stall for time. But he could be anywhere. He's in one place. And I'll find which one. All right, well, then I should go with you because he may need me to talk to him. 
no, you need to stay here because if Henry's not here to speak for himself, then you're the next best thing. So I'll take Bivy and she can throw some Shakespeare on him if he needs talking to him. Okay. Once more into the breach, dear friends. Once more. Stefan, if we need to kill time, we may need you to entertain them. Got your back. What can I do? You and I are gonna write something for Henry to say. Lori and Alberto, just try to get along. I uh, put a tracking device on Henry during week one. How'd you do that? Did you eat breakfast this morning? Yeah. You don't want to know. I love the smell of failure, especially in the morning. Oh shit, Robertson. Dr. Robertson. Dr. Powell, such a wonderful sight on such a beautiful day. Where's Henry? Oh, Henry had to attend to a family emergency. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no, no, his brother was just involved in a, in a fatal car accident. Fatal? Fatal. Did I say fatal? <laughs> Silly me, I, I meant I meant minor. I, I'm just, I think I'm just really, you know, excited. <laughs> so am I, Dr. Powell, so am I. <sighs> Coleman, where are you? All right, we're on the edge of town, Regina, but, but we're getting close. There he is. Okay. We spotted him. Good job. They found Henry. Thank God. I know, but it's going to be a while before he's going to be here, so I've got to kill time. Just hang tight. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Regina Powell, Associate Professor of Conflict Mediation at Our Nolan University and Assistant to Dr. Henry Caldwell. Dr. Caldwell is currently attending to a family emergency and will be arriving shortly. But right now, I want to introduce the amazing, the incomparable Stefan Stiles. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hey, let's just get this thing started, huh? Girl, you're my baby, my woman, my girl. That's what I did with my career. And now I'm gonna join it. Come and talk to him. Well, you talk to him. That's what I brought you for. I didn't think he was gonna try to kill himself. If I talk to him, I guarantee you, he's gonna kill himself. Girl, you're my baby. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Maybe one more time. What? Play something else. Like what? I don't know, anything. I don't have anything else. <laughs> Stefan Styles, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. We're gonna kick your butt tonight. Henry, I know everything seems like crap right now. I know what's on the line for you. You do? Regina told us. We know that it was all part of a bet, but that's okay. I'm better now than I was 100 days ago. 100 days ago, I couldn't say a thing when it mattered. And now, I've got the confidence to try to talk you out of killing yourself. That's progress. 
But the Subaru call will show no empirical evidence of improvement. So what? Who cares about some stupid evaluation? I know what's in here. And this is different. And there are five people back at the house that feel that way too. They're trying to help you win that bet. They are? Really? It's not enough to help the people up, but to support him after. We got him, Regina. We are on our way. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. Yeah. Wasn't that just fabulous? Thanks, Snow Clear Earl. Great. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for your patience. Dr. Caldwell will be arriving shortly. Now I want to talk to you that about my own experience. That was really great. Oh, thanks. My experiences with you know, I'd Lori, Stefan, love to get a copy Alberto, of it. Vivian, <coughs> Evelyn, and Coleman really? Have given me new insight into okay, sure. human behavior. <laughs> Afternoon, Evelyn had this appointment with a foreign diplomat, and Coleman threw open the door because he thought he was a spy, but the... And the guy was gagged, so you couldn't even hear him scream. <laughs> just goes to show you that you shouldn't force people to do things that they don't want to do. <laughs> Dr. Henry Caldwell! Stick to the script. Read it like you mean it. Good afternoon. Thank you for your patience. I stand before you today and fully admit to my failure. <clears throat> I have failed by objective measures. But if I have learned anything in my time mediating conflicts, it's that objective measures rarely apply. I came to this house with the expectation that I would end all of the arguments and disagreements between the six people that lived here. I believed that they were unhappy and unsatisfied people, imprisoned by their own interpersonal conflicts. My goal was to have them see their own shortcomings and by correcting those faults, end those battles. But it was my own shortcoming that I discovered, the belief that I could make peace in any situation. Life is conflict. We encounter it every day, in all places. But its presence doesn't necessarily constitute discord. What I've learned from these six people is that we can coexist. Just because a piece of paper an objective measure says we differ. It does not mean that we cannot live together. So often we find that there ain't no good guys. There ain't no bad guys. It's only you and me, and we just disagree. Thank you. I can't believe you don't have that ending. Oh my Bullshit! Bullshit! I can't believe you people are buying this. He said he could resolve all the interpersonal conflicts of these people in 100 days, and he failed. He didn't do it. And not just because he's a fraud, but because these people are six of the most vexatious, fulsome, disturbed, misfits able to walk free. You've got an actress who can't act, a songwriter with one song, a sexually deviant entrepreneur, a total psychopath, an abject coward from a country no one's ever heard of, and an anal retentive pencil puncher. You don't talk about Lori like that, you goat-faced donkey ace. I'm, 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 I'm incredibly 
and so I, I, I don't know what came over me. I promise I'll never see anything like that ever again. Ilberto. <laughs> uh, uh, Nape, Nape, uh, Trachea. Uh, uh, Try me. Try me. Uh, uh, now apologize uh, to her. No. Uh, I'm heartily sorry for what I said just then, Miss Funnel. Uh, I assure you there was no ill intent. I was right. Now get out of my damn house. That concludes our press conference. If you have any questions for Dr. Caldwell, Dr. Powell, or any of the tenants, please feel free to ask. Caldwell came out smelling like a rose. He wrote a book with Dr. Powell about the whole experience, and it shot up the bestseller list. And uh, Evelyn came out of retirement to represent them. Don't know if she still does the domination thing at all anymore. Oh. After writing a second song, the floodgate opened, and Stefan wrote enough songs for a 45-minute set. Now he's a proper struggling musician. Talking Henry out of killing himself was a huge confidence booster for Vivian. She finally made her stage debut as Juliet in a community theater production opposite a 58-year-old Romeo. <laughs> Standing up to Dr. Robertson was the bravest thing a Sancta Marinia has ever done. So the people of Sancta Marinia elected Zima president for life in a landslide. Lori was even more impressed that Zima stood up to Robertson and became the first lady of Santa Marini. It's now the most efficiently run country in Europe. So now you're all caught up. That's quite the experience, Agent Coleman. It was edifying. Since Zima's out of the picture, we're reassigning you. We have a team of specialists in need of training. We want you to keep an eye on them. Toilet Cougar. Situation normal. 